low temperature well. So it depends on high pressure or not high pressure. If we have high pressure, then we, okay, we have line heater. But if we have low pressure, we may outside the head space a lot. We may not have a line heater. So this is a gas treating facility. We have separator. So in any time of day, we just have separator. So we may shock it first, okay, at the line heater, or maybe at the well head, and we have the separator that can handle a certain pressure, could be uh, lower pressure because we already shock it, <clears throat> or maybe pressure that can withstand a unexpected uh, circumstances. So this separator, it will remove gas out from liquid phase, then you send the liquid phase, which may have oil and water to remove uh, you go to a heater trigger to remove oil from gas if you have emulsion. Okay. Once you remove most of water out, then we may use a dehydrator unit to remove water from gas. Okay. So this separator, okay. <coughs> this is to conform to the gas contract, remove anything that we cannot sell out. Okay, just that. You will read more, right? So can I skip it? Please read it so that next time when I ask questions, you can answer it. Okay, name of separator. Sometimes they call scrubber, slug catcher, traps, free water knockout, free water knockout is three phase separator. Sometimes we have two phase separator, three phase separator, vertical separator, horizontal separator. The way separator work is use the different in density to separate it. If your oil and water has the same density, it won't separate. You agree? So what do we do? We may heat it up so that hopefully when we heat it up it has different density that it can separate or something. So it separates based on different in density. Density has to be different. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have time to do this. Okay. Quiz is very easy, okay? This quiz, if you... Okay, let's explain about our quiz a little bit before we, we move on. It's true or false, five questions, okay? Raw score is calculated by minus two for wrong answer. If you, your answer is wrong, you get minus two. Zero for no answer. And plus two if you have answer. For example, in these five questions, if you do all wrong, you get minus ten. Okay, the way that we grade it is this. Effective score is the score that we use. Effective score, you get eight if your raw score is less than six. If your raw score is more than six but less than eight, you get nine. If you get more than eight, you get ten. So you can just get eight or nine or ten, okay? Don't worry about it too much. But the raw score, guess what? It's the actual score that you're going to get in the real exam. Okay? But this quiz, you're going to get just 8, 9, or 10. So not that difficult, right? Is it? <laughs> in this quiz, you can just get 8, 9, or 10. Next question. What? If you get from minus 10 to 6, your score will be adjusted to be 8. Alright? So you can just get 8, 9, 10. Yes, that's right. Good enough? So don't worry about it too much. Let's continue on. We have still have more time. So you will read those things. Okay, let's take a look on what impact separation, okay? Gas and liquid flow rate obviously impact the separator. If we have high flow rate, we need big separator. Okay, make sense? High flow rate need big separator. Uh, operating temperature and pressure. If we have low temperature, 
maybe we need to heat it up because low temperature has high viscosity. High viscosity means a droplet of gas, or I mean, droplet of water that in oil may move very slow, or gas bubble may have a hard time of passing through layer of liquid if we have high viscosity. Okay. So we have to think if we have a slugging tendency in the stream or not. Um, slugging means, let's say we have a low spot. Okay. We have two phase flow. We accumulate liquid over there. So we have gas coming in here plus liquid. Gas, maybe stay over here. Because it's lighter, it cannot pass through. Right? So what happens is gas has to accumulate itself until it has enough pressure. Once it has enough pressure, it pushes all this liquid ahead of it to the separator. So then the pipe is clean and liquid starts to form again. Okay? So in the separator, you will see no nothing coming in, after a while, a lot of liquid coming in. Okay, so if that is the case, we may need to use a vertical separator that is not, that allows some liquid level shape. Okay, we will talk about that. Physical property like density, viscosity, compressibility factor. So if it is viscous, separator operate by the different in density. If the density is different, it will separate. But look, in my oil is nine nine nine. My water is one thousand kilogram per cubic meter. The density is different, but the density the difference in the density is so small, so it takes long time to separate out. Got it? But if I have one thousand then maybe 780. So the difference in the density is small. So it's different, it separates quicker. Good? Alright. So we may have paraffin, sand particle, impurity, it may form foam, it may be corrosive material. Okay? Those things impact separation process. Okay, this is the basic of separator, vertical separator. One thing that I want you to know is the location of pressure relief valve. Pressure relief valve, you see this blue thing? We put it over there for the case where if mist extractor get plugged. Okay, if mist extractor get plugged, pressure in the separator will build up. Right? If you have more and more and more pressure. When pressure is built up enough, it comes out from the pressure relief valve instead of main explosion. Okay? If we don't have pressure relief valve, it's gonna break. We don't want to break it. So we add a pressure relief valve over there. Pressure relief valve must sense the increase in pressure of the separator. If I put pressure relief valve over here. Is it good? No, because if I plug the mist extractor, the pressure increase in here, this guy doesn't feel anything, it's explode, it break. Okay. Um, very frequent this thing is in the exam, location of uh, pressure relief valve. Mist extractor can get plugged. Let's say we have some sand particle. Okay, we have small paraffin particle, like grass, stay over there. Over time, some dust keep accumulated, it's small now, but over five months, maybe it plugged. When it plugged, okay, hopefully we, we know it before it plugged, we don't plug it, but if it plugged, we have pressure relief valve. This part we call mist extractor. Another part we call inlet diverter, okay. Liquid collection section, gravity settling section. Guess what? This kind of name is like if you fill in the blank in the exam. 
What do we call this session? Oh, that's a gas session session. What do we call this session? Liquid collection session. You can do it, right? What is the name of this unit? So in the exam, most of the time, you just put a box and delete that thing and you, you fill in the blank. Say, what is that? If you say it wrong, get minus one or something. Right, good? Yes. So how are they different the pressure control valve and the level control valve? And both they pressure and are and, and both measuring okay. pressure? Okay, on the top, yes. the level control valve, it can be like a dumb valve. Or you can control the pressure. Dumb valve, in the in this Saturday, you will see the internal part. It have an arm, and inside, it have a floating element. So this floating element, okay, stay over here. If liquid level go up, that ball, like hollow ball, it float up. When it float up, it open the valve. Okay. When the liquid level go down, the floating element go down, so it close the valve like what we have in the toilet. Okay, good. Um, on the top part, it control how much pressure. Let's say I set it at 75 PSI over here. 75 PSI. So this means if the pressure in the tank is more than 75 PSI, it will come out. Okay. But if it's not enough, if it is not 75 PSI, it stays. It doesn't open. Okay. Pressure relief valve, it operates similar to pressure relief valve, not exact. Pressure relief valve inside is have a spring. Okay, it's have a spring. And over here, we have a valve over here, and we have a seal. So when we have enough pressure coming in, it push against the spring. When the valve is more than the spring force, it will then it coming out this way. Okay, that's a pressure relief valve. Uh, so on the top we may connect to seventy five. So this control may control at seventy five psi in the tank. Okay, maybe that's seventy five psi working pressure. If the pressure is more than seventy five psi, gas come out. What about liquid phase? I have a floating part over there to open and close the valve, the dumb valve. If liquid level is too high, it opens the valve. If the liquid level is low, it closes the valve. Uh, question, question, question. Lori Waldo? Lori Waldo. Lori Waldo Domingos? Okay. What do you think about pressure of water that, or liquid phase that are coming out over there? If I control this at 75, and I have the dumb valve, when the liquid level is too high, liquid phase will come out. What is the pressure of that liquid phase? Will it be at 75? Can I connect this to a tank that can do like five pounds? So can this liquid go into the tank that do five pounds? If it's coming out at 75 PSI. So that tank, maybe pressure rating, maybe two PSI, is it two PSI? It's supposed to be five pounds. If it's more than that, it's explored. <coughs> what do you think? So can 75 go there? You don't think so? Based on what do you think? Knockout to be rated higher, but those vessels, when they come to the tank, it's all right. 
you take the pressure drop across the valve, dissipating the energy there, and then it goes to the tank. So it's all right. It's okay. You go from 75 to five months. It's okay. Like he said, water hose inside is 40 psi. But when you open the bar, it's not explosion, right? It's coming out. It's just okay. So that 75 psi, when it goes through the valve, if you have the pressure drop across the valve, if the pressure drop is not much, you just like splash inside maybe a little bit faster. So if the pressure over there is high, maybe it splash faster. If it's low, it's like slower. So this valve, if you squeeze more, it can flow less, right? Okay. So it, it doesn't come out like very fast or anything. It's just liquid phase. So it can fill that five five ounce tank with no problem. Good? Alright. And we will talk more in the East Campus. Another two phase separator. Okay, we have inlet diverter. Inlet diverter is very important in the plant. Okay. It do the separation based on the difference in kind of momentum. Momentum. Okay. So when the incoming fluid have different momentum, which fluid has a difficult time to turn? The one that have high momentum. Like a big truck coming in, it it have a hard time to turn, right? But if you just walk, you can turn very easy. So different momentum have a different degree of difficulty to turn because of this inlet diverter. It hit and it turn. So because of that, it do the separation. If I have a not a like gas bubble in the liquid phase. Gas bubble, we have different momentum. Momentum is m multiplied by v, right? It has different momentum and it can do the separation. A lot of separation occur over there. Okay, once it passes over here, then we may have some dropback over here. Okay, some liquid dropback over there. What do we do with that dropback? We wish that it fall down over here, right? But what if the separator is very, have a lot of liquid over there? Liquid level is high. So it has small cross section area over there. So what happens? It flow faster. You see, it, it, gas volumetric flow that coming in, it's kind of constant. Liquid level, it depends on us on how much we use. So if we have high level of liquid phase over there, we will have a little bit of cross-section area for the gas to flow. Small cross-section area with high flow rate will cause high velocity. Make sense? It will be high velocity. But if I operate it, like instead of half full, I operate it one quarter full. So this would be big cross-section area. Okay, this is a big cross-section area. Same flow rate, big cross-section area, velocity is slower, okay, slower. Then it will stay inside longer. I mean, gas particle will stay inside the separator in a longer period of time. But if we have high liquid level, it moves very fast. So gas molecule will not have much time to stay inside, right? But if we operate at low liquid level, it flows slower, so gas molecule will stay longer inside. The time that that gas molecule stays in there, we call retention time. Okay. How long do we need for that gas molecule to stay inside? long enough, such that we have liquid droplet coming out. So if we have a lot of time, this droplet may fall down like that. Okay? But if we don't have a lot of time, it flows very fast, this liquid droplet go right to the mix extractor. So we need enough time so that 
liquid droplets can fall and reach this level. What does it mean? Bigger separator will have more area of the gas flow and it allows longer time of water droplet or oil droplet to stay inside and it has enough time to fall down. All right, let's, let's take a look at, okay, let's say we do three-phase separator or three-phase separator. Oh, it's not here. Uh, okay, if we have gas in liquid, okay, gas bubble in liquid, gas will take a certain amount of time to coming out, right? If I operate this thing, a quarter full. So because gas from the top pushing the liquid level down, so I don't have much liquid level, right? Velocity in this direction is volumetric flow rate divided by cross section area. Cross section area is this area, that small area. So when area is small, so this film move very fast, very quick. So if that happened, do we have a long time? for separation to occur in the liquid phase? No. So small gas bubble will have shorter period of time. However, when we operate it at thinner liquid level, the distance that the droplet required to travel is also less. Right? If I operate this much, okay, if we happen to have small bubble, and the bottom, it has to travel that long, okay? Got it? But this, the good thing is, when we operate at more um, <coughs> cross-section area or more liquid level, it travels slower, so it has more time, but it also has to travel longer. So those things we take into consideration and we come up with separate equation, okay? We will go over that in more detail. Okay, four, more, four main part of the separator that you will have to read and be able to tell what does it do. Number one, in the diverter. Okay, we need it like diverter. Do the separation based on the momentum. Okay, like a splash pad. Probably settling section allows small liquid droplet to come out. Okay. Okay, there are some number to to be aware of or to memorize. Droplet greater than 100 micron is bad for this extractor. So we try to separate everything that is more than 100 micron before it reach the mist extractor. Okay. So another main component is liquid collection section, mist extractor section. Of course, you will read those, right? Good? You do the reading because I, I can't read it for you, but I know that you can read it. Okay, working principle for is no press separator. <coughs> Bigger separator allow, allow more cross-section area for the gas to flow. When we have more cross-section area, velocity is volumetric flow rate divided by cross-section area. It makes low velocity or more retention time. So the droplet has some time to separate out, okay? Of course, you read the, the rest. Uh, spherical separator is good to do high pressure, but it's a little bit difficult to size it because of the shape, okay? And it has this extract over here. If the diverter is over there, you read the rest, of course. Fabrication, difficulty, difficult to make, but it withstand high pressure. Okay. All right. This part is about how do we make a separator. We need inlet diverter. Inlet diverter will help to do 90% of the separation happen over there, inlet diverter. So if somehow separator doesn't work, maybe inlet diverter doesn't, maybe inlet diverter is just gone or something, or erosion happened on the inlet diverter. We need droplet separation section, okay? 
liquid collection session, mist extractor. Mist extractor try to do separation of one or uh, ten to one hundred micron. That is the target to design the separator. Okay. Music smaller than ten micron, mist extractor is not to separate those. More than 100 microns, it should be separate already before it reach this extractor. Okay, let's go back here a little bit. The size is matter. Okay, big droplet fall faster than small droplet. You believe me? But you have have you ever seen an experiment like okay, heavy rock and smaller rock fall to the ground at the same time? That is for the case where we don't have much viscosity. Like, and almost have no viscosity, right? So big object, a small object, fall to the ground at the same time. But if you have some viscosity, try, tell Galilee or do that in water. It's not the same, right? So it has some viscosity. Big droplet drop faster. So the droplet size is matter for the calculation, okay? It will be in the terminal velocity calculation. All right. Sometimes the student use uh, this picture and tell me that they want to put pressure deliver over there right after the mid extractor. And they said it is in the slide. Do we do that? No, we don't do that. Okay, and I tell you the correct version here already. So for those who may not. Who may miss it? May put it over there. If you put it over there, minus one. Okay, not put it over there. Advantages, disadvantage. Okay, good thing with big vertical separator requires small footprint. Doesn't require much area. It can handle the change in liquid level. Yes, question. So why do we have it there? It's wrong. It's just a cartoon. Okay? The actual thing is has to be over here. Okay, this is wrong. Not not good over there. It is. It's just a schematic, and they, they didn't like put it correctly. It should not be that. But it was separated, good to handle solid. Okay, if you have solid, it accumulates at the bottom. We open one round, we remove it. Easy, easy. If you have a vertical, a horizontal separator, we have liquid, uh, solid phase everywhere. Uh, we may have to flush it or something to make it coming out. So vertical separator can handle that thing better. Uh, sometimes, okay, liquid surge. If the liquid level is very critical, like for example, in three phase separator that you will see in the lab, if the liquid level is very uh, critical, if we have surge, liquid surge coming in, it may create a wave. Okay, but if you have a vertical separator, wave doesn't do anything. Do a little bit. So, vertical separator is better for liquid surge. We can have more movement of liquid level and nothing happen. But this horizontal separator, if we have movement of liquid level, okay, just a little bit, we may have wave, wave may cause a daughter of droplet, re entrainment Droplet from liquid phase come back into the gas phase. Okay, that can happen. So we don't want wave, we, we may then we put a break, wave, wave, but okay, in general, liquid surge, if you have to research, we may use a vertical separator. Uh, of course, it's about, you have to climb over there, okay? You need a ladder, but small separator. Horizontal separator sometimes is very big too, so you may have to climb over there. Advantage, disadvantage. Uh, this thing, horizontal separator, it has a lot of surface area, okay? So, if you have foam, it can handle foam better. So we may put a foam breaker over here. But vertical separator, if you have foam, we may have a little bit difficult time to handle foam. So horizontal separator is preferred if you have foam. Plus it has kind of large surface area. So large surface area may allow foam to break easier. Read the rest, of course. It's not like it's not uh, important that you read the rest. Horizontal separator, Okay, less liquid surge capacity, slow response to level control, not good at handling solid. It can, but it's just not that good. 
Horizontal versus vertical. Let me take just one or two, okay? Plain area, vertical is better. Solid, vertical is better. Access of, ease of access, horizontal is better. Of course, you read the rest, okay? Cyclone separator. Uh, we don't really see it on the oil field, okay? It uses a separation based on a centrifugal force. If it go there, it spin, okay, and it uses separation. This thing is put over here just so you know that. This kind of thing is available, but we don't really see it on the uh, onshore field. Is it on the offshore, then?
20 mai, fit 40 mai. It has a small amount of water in it, but you do the picking, a lot come out, so we may have to catch it with that. Okay? Uh, it's 12.14. I hope you enjoy the lecture. We will continue next time. And now you're going to get this. Don't, don't try to cheat, okay? It's easy enough already. <laughs> try to pay Can you raise your hand if you don't have it yet? Write your name. You get A. If you don't write your name, you get zero. Okay, try to write your name. Mama, sit, sit, sit down, sit down. Who, who finished? Who finished? Most of you will be better a little bit longer. Let's wait two more minutes and it's time to How about that? <coughs> at 12.19, it is time up. You will create it. And you write the score for me. Oh, no, 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 you don't create it. You will swap with your friend next to you and let him create it. Okay. So, who finished already? Okay, swap, swap it. Exchange that with person next to you, behind you, or anything. Okay. Who have finished? We read. One more minute. Maybe wait one more minute. Don't try to shit. If you shit, I'll just give you F, okay? You'll get F, 9, 10, promise. But if you don't write it, then you get zero. Everyone done? Kind of done? If you don't know, don't guess it, okay? Done, everyone well done? You're not done yet? Switch it. Switch it. Switch it. 
So you need to have your cell to switch it. All right, number one, even though an engineer is not a licensed engineer, she or he still has a responsibility to protect the safety of health of public in the design of operation and facility, true or false? True. True. Great. If your friend did it wrong, give me last two. Methane is denser than N. False, come on. False. Methane doesn't tend to accumulate on the floor. Number three, a worker may not smell any H2S even if she or he exposed to a lot of H2S. Yes. True. Okay, number three is true. Number four, one sign I give you one sign of cubic foot contains less gas molecule than one actual cubic foot at 1000 psi. True. 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 True, because it's less, it's contains more gas molecule. For a single pass line heater, the shocking process should be occur before the heating process. True. Oh. True. 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 Okay, I'm sorry the time is up. Uh, you give the effective score for them, okay? Eight, nine, or ten. After you finish, you can submit to me, okay? Friend, your friend. Make sure that your friend gets correct with you. Give him eight, nine, or ten. Make sure that you write it.
But this minus 2 cancel with that plus 2. You have just 6. Wrong scale of 6 give you a pretty small game. Okay, great. You miss one, you get 8. Yeah. Depending, depending on how you list. If you didn't answer it, so if you didn't answer it, you get an answer. If you answer it, but it's wrong, you get 8. Is it, is not if, you, if you got the answer wrong, like if you put something in was wrong, it's a negative. If you put something in, that thing is wrong. So it would have been better if I would have yeah, 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 exactly. it. Would be bad, it would be better if you got answer it. Okay. It would be better if you don't answer it. Then you don't know more. Oh okay, yeah, where does this go? Where does this go? Just come on, get her. Come on.